Thank you very much. And we turn now to topical questions. Our first question is from Liam MacArthur. Thank you very much, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what new measures it is considering to address sectarianism and violent behaviour associated with football. Camera Secretary Hamza Youssef. Our preferred solution has always been that football steps up to address this long-standing problem with meaningful solutions. It's important for football to demonstrate leadership on this issue, but if action is not taken, uh, we firmly reserve the right to act to rid this vile cancer from our national game. I believe the vast majority of supporters are also frustrated that a small minority are bringing our game into disrepute and are frustrated at the lack of action by the football authorities and clubs. While we would prefer football to take action, we are considering a range of options, including the role of strict liability and the licensing of football stadiums. And I would welcome contributions from across the chamber on how we can work together to address this issue. I also understand the independent review of football policing commissioned by Police Scotland will be published tomorrow on the 6th of March and will carefully, of course, consider its findings. Liam MacArthur. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Last week, uh, DCC Will Kerr, who served in Northern Ireland for three decades, said he was surprised at the level of disorder and that, quote, the consistently thuggish behaviour of a very small number of fans is considered normal. Days earlier, Kilmarnock manager Steve Clark, quoting abuse thrown in his direction, asked, where are we living? The dark ages. The Cabinet Secretary rightly says that the vast majority of decent fans are indeed disgusted by the actions of so-called supporters who behave in this way. Uh, but does he agree that they are now looking to the authorities, including Parliament, to step up efforts to combat it? Yeah, can we say? Yeah, yes, I agree with everything that Liam MacArthur uh, has just said. And uh, I also welcome the remarks from, from DCC Bill Kerr. I thought they were very powerful. I thought also a very powerful quote from PFA, uh, Scotland's Chief Executive, Fraser uh, Wishart, who, who said that, and I quote, the football pitch is a player's place of work. It is not unreasonable for a player, like any other employee, to be, to be able to work with the knowledge that their workplace is indeed a safe environment, free from violence and discrimination, and that their health and safety is not at risk. So uh, I will carefully consider the, the Police Scotland uh, report uh, tomorrow. Uh, I will also, of course, uh, open, be open to, to suggestions from across the chamber. But it is for football authorities to step up to their responsibilities, and frankly, they have not done that uh, thus far. It's for them to step up. But as I have said in my previous answer, if they do not, we will consider a full range of options from strict liability to licensing to potentially civil football banning orders. Uh, and there are indeed many other options uh, that are currently on the table. Liam MacArthur. The Cabinet Secretary for that response and certainly uh, echo the sentiments expressed by Fraser uh, Wishart. Two years ago, Dr Duncan Morrow's report on sectarianism said that while football was only part of the jigsaw of sectarianism, quote, the continuing reluctance of the football authorities to demonstrate serious commitment on this issue means that strict liability must remain a real and present option. What is the Cabinet Secretary's assessment of how cooperative and constructive the football clubs have been in the period since? And does he agree there should be a cross-party approach to looking at escalating penalties, for example, closing sections of grounds in more serious cases. Just for the members' information, uh, Joe Fitzpatrick, who's on my, on my left here, uh, he and I both met with the SPFL and, and SFA uh, before we saw the worst of the behaviour that we've seen in, in, in recent weeks, just to press them and push them on uh, unacceptable conduct. And while the words were warm, uh, we are yet to see uh, dem demonstrable uh, action in this regard. And I repeat what I've said in my previous two answers. We would prefer it for the clubs to step up, but if they do not, <coughs> then we, will, we reserve the right to act. But I think the point that Liam MacArthur makes at the end of his question uh, is a very valid one, that when we do that, uh, and we will explore those full range of options, we should do that uh, with as much consensus uh, in this chamber uh, as we possibly can. And as I say, a number of options uh, are on the table, from strict liability to licensing to civil banning, uh, football banning orders, uh, as well as other options as well. James Dornan to be followed by Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cab Secretary will be aware that I've been a vocal critic of sectarianism associated with football, any club, and wider society for a number of years. You'll also be aware that I'm proposing a Members' Bill on strict liability, which could in include using the licensing system. 
Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that although it would clearly be, well, sorry, the Cabinet Secretary clearly agrees with me that it would be preferable for the clubs and football to bring in strict liability themselves? But if they don't, then surely a member's bill or some other way would give this parliament the power to put the pressure on the football clubs and would be a cross-party way of working to achieve that. Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I commend James Kelly for the work that he ha has done on this and strict liability, but actually James on the... Dornan. James Dornan. <laughs> no, <laughs> a faux pas. <laughs> An easy mistake. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr Kelly, I might come to you uh, a little bit uh, later on. Uh, can I commend the work that uh, James Dornan uh, has done uh, on this and on the wider issue of sectarianism, obviously, with the cross-party group, uh, and he's been a constructive voice uh, in this. Uh, what I would say is he's absolutely right. Uh, we know that strict liability remains on the table. Uh, it's an issue we will explore in relation to, to, to legal possibilities uh, of that, and I know the work that James Dornan uh, is doing. We'll keep a close eye very much uh, on that. Uh, but also, I should say, when, where we have powers in our hands, uh, i.e. Uh, around licensing, uh, we will also look uh, very extensively uh, at that issue. Uh, licensing is, is one option, as every stadium with a capacity of 10,000 or more spectators is, is required to hold uh, a safety license. And if Parliament was minded, uh, we could look again at the authorising regime for this. Uh, we would look at, for example, uh, south of the border uh, in England, where we have the sports ground safety authority, the overarching body that looks into stadium licensing. Uh, we don't have that similar body up here in Scotland, but I can say uh, I'm absolutely looking at whether uh, or not, along with the, the, the sports minister, along with the cabinet secretary for local government, whether we should have a similar body uh, up here uh, in Scotland. And along with that body, the appropriate sanctions, such as uh, closing down sections of the ground or indeed stadiums altogether, if it is in the best interest of public safety. Liam Kerr to be followed by James Kelly. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Sectarianism is a blight on our national game, and I associate myself with the Cabinet Secretary's remarks on that matter, and I'd be pleased to accept his offer to work closely on this. Uh, can you clarify, do the measures being considered by the Scottish Government involve greater use of stadium bans for individuals engaging in such abusive behaviour, and how closely are the football clubs working with the Cabinet Secretary on this? I thank Liam Kerr uh, for, for, for the question. Uh, as I referred in the previous answer, uh, Mr Fitzpatrick, Joe Fitzpatrick and I have been working very closely on this issue. We've met with the SPFL, the SFA uh, on this. Uh, we will meet with individual clubs uh, when that request uh, comes and we have uh, a number of meetings between us uh, arranged to, to, to that effect. Uh, interestingly, I know there are some clubs, a minority of them, uh, that are interested in civil football banning orders. At the moment, he'll know about football banning orders and, and, and the Chief Constable of Police Scotland's uh, role in that, but there are some clubs that would like to have the power to apply for those football banning orders. Uh, I will listen to that argument with an open mind. I haven't come to consideration uh, on that yet. And, and, and on the other point that he makes, uh, you know, all of us, I don't doubt for a minute uh, that we all have a, a shared interest in trying to stamp this out uh, of our game. Uh, it brings shame on us uh, all as a country. It brings shame to the clubs that we may support. Uh, and therefore, trying to take the entire parliament uh, with us on, on, any, in, on whatever option we decide upon will be really important and an imperative uh, part of my role moving forward. So uh, I will look forward to discussions uh, with Liam Kerr uh, and, of course, other members across this chamber. And James Kelly. Thank you. Can I caution the Cabinet Secretary against the attitude by being adopted by some commentators uh, that views football supporters with disdain uh, when only a small minority are responsible for these incidents? Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that tackling bigotry and hatred needs a wider, more considered discussion and should not be viewed solely through the lens of a football match? I agree that football clubs and authorities must do more, but does the Cabinet Secretary accept that any spe uh, football-specific initiatives need consensus and widespread support and that rushed knee-jerk reactions are not the answer? Cabinet Secretary. Um, <coughs> What I would say to, to, to James Kelly is, is, is a few things. One, uh, yes, we will do what we have been doing to tackle sectarianism uh, wider in society, but let's please not have our head in the sand. Let's not ignore what has happened, not just in recent weeks, but I know James Kelly is a football supporter. In fact, he and I support the, the, the same club, so he's a football supporter. He knows that this has been going on, not for years, but for decades. And I would have thought maybe Mr Kelly might have come here with a little bit of humility. Mm. Uh, to this chamber, somebody who was the poster boy for the repeal of the Offensive Behaviour Football Act, when a number of stakeholders told us that repealing that act would embolden the unacceptable conduct we've seen. And we've absolutely seen that uh, happen here today. And what I would say to James Kelly, yes, you're right, we don't just need words, we need action. 
Uh, and I had noted his own comments when the Act was repealed, that he said he would bring forward a plan fit for 2018. Uh, I will, we haven't seen that plan yet, but I will absolutely include, include James Kelly and others, uh, if they have constructive ideas, uh, then, then please come to the Chamber. But yes, there is a societal-wide issue here, but let's not ignore the fact that there is a problem in and around football uh, with sectarianism, with unacceptable conduct, and we must tackle that, as well as tackling the wider issue also. Thank you. Question number two, Alexander Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that the number of paramedics signed off work with depression or stress increased by more than 40% last year. Minister Joe Fitzpatrick. We value the tremendous work our ambulance service staff do, often in exceptionally challenging con conditions. Um, employee health and wellbeing is fundamental, which is why we've made clear that Scottish Ambulance Service must have robust policies in place to support mental health and wellbeing. The Board has provided assurance that there are a number of programmes already underway across the service that provide dedicated stress, incident management and effective trauma support. Scottish Ambulance Service funding has increased to a record high and paramedic staffing has also increased by 19%. We're committed to ensuring that the service has the resources it needs to support staff and promote employee welfare. Alexander Stewart. I thank the Minister for that response. With 151 paramedics taking time off sick with anxiety, stress or depression in 2018, which was a rise of 42.5% over the previous year, does the Minister not agree that these statistics are really shocking? Minister. I, I agree that the, 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 um, the, the welfare of our staff is, is really, really important and staff welfare is fundamental, which is why we've been clear about the fact that the ambulance service must have robust policies in place to manage employee health and wellbeing. We'll continue to work with the service to support the delivery of effective health and wellbeing initiatives, including training, counselling, peer support. One example of that would be the, um, the Anchor Centre in Glasgow, which my, my, my colleague, the Minister for Mental Health, visited just last week. Alexander Stewart. I thank the Minister for that response. Staff in the ambulance service have suggested that there is a real reluctance by their employers to accept that staff suffer from post-traumatic stress. And they've reported uh, that, that, that there is not much support available to them. So can the Minister commit to doing all he can to help the ambulance service educate their staff, to furnish them with the skills necessary to cope with this as a matter of urgency? Minister. So I think I, I've just talked about the policies that we expect to be in place, but uh, maybe one of the points I should make is that these figures that were released last December um, that relates to the question here um, being answered at topical questions today, um, they, these relate to self-reporting. So, I mean, the idea that it's got something to do with the management, it's, it's self-reporting by the, by the staff, and that's why the figures are as they are. David Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The Minister uh, may be aware that I raised the issue of sickness levels in the ambulance service at the Health and Sport Committee last week. And the Scottish Ambulance Service has the third highest level of sickness absence in all of Scotland's health board, and the levels have remained static year on year. Is the Minister confident that the current approach of the Ambulance Service leadership is sufficient to support the workforce and reverse this trend? I think it's important that we, we keep making sure that the ambulance service is providing the appropriate support um, to, to their staff, the same as everywhere, everywhere else in our, 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 health, our health service. Um, one of the things, of course, is to make sure that we provide them with the correct resources, and that's why it's important that we have increased funding substantially to the service. Um, in terms of paramedics, that's gone up by some 19 per cent, and we are committed to training 1,000 more paramedics um, over the course of, of this parliament. So I think that's, that's a really important structure to make sure that we have the correct resources in place to support those staff. Thank you very much, and that concludes topical questions.